Hi, in this video and in the next few videos, I'm going to talk about the NumPy package in Python. So we'll first import the NumPy package. It's, it's a very useful package for scientific computing and for data analysis. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the basic feature of NumPy, which we can use to sort of, uh, you know, uh, do data analysis, simple data analysis. And, and the different features that NumPy provide us in, in terms of doing data analysis, uh, whether simple or more sophisticated ones. Uh, so we'll first import NumPy and we give it an NP, which is more standard. Import NumPy as NP. And then we can use uh, NP wherever we want to use NumPy. And then we'll call the different methods, the functions, and the different you know different features of numpy um, so we'll see some of them we can uh, create n dimensional array using numpy which is very useful for data analysis and how do we create we use the array uh, method so here is how we create np dot array and then within square bracket we provide the elements to be there in the array right and we also obviously define the array name okay the array name is data we assign that to be np.array and then we provide the uh, elements to uh, this array. Okay, and we run this and here are the elements in the array. Now we can do all sorts of operation on this array. Okay, and we'll see that. The other way is to define also. We simply define a list. Okay, we call that with the name data and then we define the array data one. Okay, which takes data as the parameter okay so instead of the values directly we simply you know define it as a list and then uh, provide that list name as the parameter and you know it's the same it's just that the two ways or different way of assigning um, or defining an array okay we can define uh, array with uh, special values like zeros or you know with no values or, or just ones Okay, so we have zeros method which uh, we can use in uh, in order to uh, define an array with certain dimension and the elements of that particular array would only be zeros. So np dot zeros and then we want a 5 cross 2 um, array. Okay, and let's run this. So here is we have you know 5 cross 2 array with all the elements as 0. We can have empty array as well where we won't simply have any values okay. Uh, we'll use the method empty. We will run this. Uh, yes and you can see that there's values. Uh, you will never have you know empty. You will have extremely small values so that's something to uh, be kept in mind. We'll have extremely small values. Um, these are randomly created and then you know it helps actually when you simply want an empty array so that you know you can you know sort of um, assign different values to uh, you know different values later on okay um, but remember one thing that an empty array will uh, will not have um, empty elements rather some elements but they're extremely sm uh, small elements you can simply uh, override them um, when you actually use them later on. You can do a lot of operations on arrays. Um, so we define, uh, let's say, a two-dimensional array, two by two array, uh, and this is how it looks. We can multiply arrays, like simple operations, the way we multiply scalars, we can also multiply arrays. Okay, so here we have so this is not a matrix multiplication. So let's, uh, you know, matrix multiplication is different. This is a simple, you know, more like scalar multiplication. Okay. When we multiply that, each element will, uh, you know, get multiplied to the corresponding element of the same array. Okay. So two is multiplied to two, which gives out four. Four is multiplied to four, which gives uh, sixteen, and so on. We can take like let's say one uh, divided by data. So one. And then each element of the array will um, be in the denominator and whatever we get it's simply going to be there in the output so 1 divided by data like 1 by 2 so to the first element is 0.5 1 by 4 is like 0.25 
and then we can also add data plus data you know it's simply going to add the corresponding elements um, we can do a lot of slicing dicing operation on on uh, on arrays and that's important because sometimes we'll have a pretty long array and we simply want uh, some elements of the array now we have the data array and let's for instance we want you know the let's say uh, the first element or the second element now here in this case remember there are two elements uh, for each each line right we have two four and then six eight now each um, line is considered as an element here okay so if you provide let's say data 0 you get the first element which will obviously have you know two values 2 and 4 and then um, you provide 1 you get 6 and 8 but how do you fetch let's say the single element uh, you know single element as in a single value of that you know particular element it need not be you know the combined values uh, because what happens is that you know when we defined we actually defined you know with sort of uh, like each uh, one particular row as one element right we had then several of them just two of them here and then it combined as like say two elements having two numbers or so two values in each element but how do we get just you know one particular value from that element well we get um, simply have to use indexes like 0 0 let's see what we get we get 2 that means uh, from the first element the first value uh, 0 1 let's say it's, it's going to give second element from the sorry second value from the first element uh, 1 1 we should be getting 8 right that's right yeah the other ways to also do slicing we can use the colon and we define you know let's say a new array and then we can use let's say from 2 to 5 from index 2 to index 5 we want the elements um, and you know there are 4 5 6 it starts with like it starts with 0 and then 1 2 4 5 6 combined from like 2 to 5 uh, indexes so that's what we get Okay, we can do boolean operations also like you know uh, we can do slicing based on uh, some boolean values boolean values are basically either true or false or one and zero okay the binary um, such cases okay so just take an example so we define um, uh, an array that takes only the strings uh, we call that as names let's say okay so np dot array will use the array method to define this uh, array which only has strings I mean the names of some people and then we also define another array which takes random values or random numbers and say so it's a 3 cross 5 um, array and we take the ran n method from the random package and okay let's run this so the name of the first array is names the second one is num okay when we run this we get this one right so uh, these are the random numbers that we generated from the rand n uh, method and let's for instance you know these names that we defined each name is associated with one of the element or one of the row of this particular uh, you know array okay and then how can we sort of uh, use the names in order to you know um, subset or slice this particular array second array num okay so here is like the logic okay if you say names equal to equal to peter it's going to give you whether it's true or false for each element of the array nums so first obviously it's true because the first element is peter the other two was false and false we can also subset the values from num based on uh, this boolean value so these are the boolean values right true or false okay so when you use that as the um, the sort of um, sec uh, filtering criteria 
and then we can simply filter the values where it is going to be true or false so you let's run this so this is where we have used it right? name is equal to equal to sam so the first case is true so we'll simply get the first uh, row and the other two row uh, are not going to be displayed okay so that's what we'll get you see we only get the first row uh, do we get the first row no 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 sorry so sam is the second right sam is the second okay let me use here i'm sure the second uh, would be true and the first and last would be false right so we will simply get the second row uh, which starts with uh, negative 0.63 and this is how we get okay uh, negative 0 0.63 and 0 0.66 and so on right this is the second row that we get because this is the second element is just true uh, the boolean value is true others are simply false okay how do we get the negations that means um, except this particular uh, row just give me everything else so in we you know we instead of the equal to sign we use the negation sign okay um, so we want uh, elements where except where it is Peter, right? So except the first, uh, because Peter is in the first element, so except the first row, we simply want the other ones. And you will get the second and third here, right? So second and third rows is what we get here. We can also use the uh, logical operators like or and 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 so on. So or basically because, you know, and one makes sense because um so we'll we use the or okay nems equal to sam and nems equal to peter so we want cases where we have ram and uh, sorry sam and peter um so the first element and the second element and then that's exactly what we want from the number array. okay the first and second is what we get if you change it to something else um it's also going to be the same for instance if we uh, change it to Rick, Sam and Rick, okay, so it's only going to give second and the third element or the second and third row. Uh, we can subset based on some other uh, logical values like greater than or less than or equal to and so on. So we want uh, cases where the number, the values are greater than zero or all positive values. Uh, we can get those values. So these are the values that are positive or more than zero uh, we can also assign so how do we assign um, we assign values to all those cases I and mean, the negative values where they are all you know less than zero as zero okay so we use the assignment operator to sort of well you know assign it as zero and that's what we get and we see wherever we had like negative values previously we have now zeros is fancy indexing so this is basically where we pass on an array to subset an array okay so instead of using this you know the colon or the boolean operators what we just saw will will pass on an array in order to subset um, the elements from an, an array so how do you do that so let's take an example we'll use uh, empty method in order to create uh, an sort of an empty array I will say 4 cross 4 empty array and these are the you know the garbage values okay so you will never get uh, all zeros you will always get some garbage values when you use empty method so what we'll do is that we'll simply assign you know let's say the um, ordering of the values okay and then it's a 4 cross 4 uh, array right so in the first row we'll assign zeros followed by 1 2 and and 3 okay and how do we do that we'll simply write a loop for i in range 4 so it will range from 0 to 3 and then we'll assign the values first row it will assign zeros 1 and second row g 1 third 3 uh, 2 and 4 uh, with 3 that's what it is um, so as expected that's exactly what we get and then um, let's say for instance we want uh the first row the third row first and third okay so how do we get it we simply pass on an array so zero and two and we will see that we get um you know two rows 
right the first one and the third one and let's say we want um, the second one and the let's say the fourth one so one and three right so that's the way we can so we are basically here passing an array but we're also subsetting the array right so that's called fancy indexing yeah so uh, we can use um, um, we can use a lot of functions um, for in numpy to do a lot of operations um, so transpose is like one common thing in matrix we can also do that for arrays so the method t transpose in sort known as t can be used for that so we are uh, creating you know an array um, and then we are shaping it to four and five so the arrange method what it does is that let's run this and i'm sure you will be able to see it here uh, okay let me create a new one so when you use np dot arrange it's going to give you an array with uh, values from 0 to 19 so there will be 20 elements starting from 0 to 19 okay uh, because the maximum value that we have you know um, provided is 20 and then we are reshaping it into a 4 cross 5 array okay so there will be 4 uh, 5 elements in 4 rows okay we'll do that and then we'll take okay let's run this select run this particular array and this is how it looks it's a it has four rows and five columns of you know five values in each rows and we want to take its transpose right if you're familiar with matrix algebra transpose is just a rearranging the number within the array right your uh, values in the rows becomes the values in the column that basically is the transpose right we use the transpose method and in sort we just you know write t capital t and it's going to give us right you can see it just uh, um, you know the rows the values in the rows becomes the values in the columns right uh, the last thing we'll see in numpy is the universal functions okay there are quite a few universal functions there are few i'm going to talk about like you can use a square root or exponential, all the math function, logarithm, sine, seal, full floor, and so on. So you can use this for maximum, minimum, and, and so on. So these functions can be used directly uh, on the arrays in order to get some values, some scalar values, right? Uh, or even some vector values, irrespective. Um, but you can directly use them without having to do your separate operations. So these are universal functions. Uh, we'll take few of them, like square root. Uh, we have a n-dimensional array, and we can take, we can use the square root method in order to uh, sort of find the square root of each element uh, of that particular array. Okay, so we get the square root of each element from the the array arr. We can uh, take the exponential of each element of that you know array and that's what we get 